time has finally arrived to talk about the dreaded Tesla, <laughs> a car which I saw lots of people making jokes about when we first saw it in the silhouettes, certainly when we saw it in the teaser trailer, and even when it arrived in the game, I'm sure that for many people it was probably one of the last cars, if not the last car that you got around to, and perhaps even in some cases maybe people still haven't even bought the car. But as I said yesterday in my review for the classic Dodge Charger, I do think that this car deserves more attention than it's getting, because even though some players have definitely noticed, you know, hang on a second, this thing is actually pretty damn quick, because yes, it's a Tesla Model 3, it's not the most obvious choice to add to the game, something like a Model X would have been more obvious, maybe even the original Tesla Roadster would have been a nice addition, but that's the one they went for, and at least it is the all-wheel drive performance model. And because of that, not only is it a heck of a lot quicker than the Tesla Model S, but it's also a lot more useful. Because as powerful as the older one is, that speed limiter being set up around 135, it just made it next to useless. It's the same issue that, of course, the Fisker Karma used to have. One of the cars which I would love to get my hands on for a review in real life. I've always loved the Fisker. The Tesla, though, of course, had quite a bit more success <laughs> than that car did. And this one is actually the cheapest out of all of the cars in Spec 2 at only 55,000 credits. The point level immediately clues you in that this thing might actually be better than you'd think because it sits at 582, close to 583, which is not bad for such a relatively cheap car. And then, of course, you look at the horsepower, 531. So even if you can't do anything to it, which, incidentally, you actually can increase the power just a little bit, it's still not crazy, still in the high 500 region, but 500, even so, is already more than enough for an electric car to have plenty of potential, the weight is, as you would assume, fairly high, thankfully a lot less than the Model S, 1836 kilos, and even more thankfully, you can drop it a lot. You can shave hundreds and hundreds of kilos out of this thing, and again, that alone, combined with the horsepower, should make it, at the very least, a missile off the line. And of course, with four-wheel drive as well, it means that unlike the Model S, yet again with its rear-wheel drive layout, this should be more useful through corners as well, or at least less weird with its handling than the Model S can sometimes be. Well, spoiler is, it's all of the above. This is a really quick little car, and thankfully that top speed alone makes it so much better than the other Tesla that we already had. This thing can do already up around the 150, 160 region, and when you do drop the weight, increase the power just a little bit, and of course give it some stickier tires and the usual kind of stuff that you do to any track day car, this is not only very quick, but it's actually extremely useful. Some of the new career mode events, in fact, one in particular, I don't recall what track it was on, but I ended up actually using this car because it was just the clear choice. I believe it was one of the newer Fuji events, or at least one of the weekly challenges at the time. This thing just blew the doors off of the competition because even though the top speed wasn't that great, in comparison to some others, it gets to that speed so much more quickly, and with the four-wheel drive gets out of corners so quickly, and of course, because of the direct drive of an electric car, you don't have to waste time changing gears, it just ticks all of those boxes down the list of having such a good all-round package. Now, I will say, I'm not a huge Tesla fan. I've driven a Model S Performance, I believe it was the 540 horsepower model in real life, I reviewed it in Beards and Cars, and as quick as it undoubtedly is, it feels very clinical. It's a very sterile feeling car. It's like driving an iPhone. But performance is performance, and that's the one thing that you cannot argue. This is a properly quick car. One of the main gripes I actually have with Tesla is a very superficial one, but my gripe is that there is no other car that allows you the stylistic freedom that an electric car does. The fundamental core of its design is basically all in the floor pan, so it allows you to design the visual style of the car and even its shape in pretty much any way that you would want. You could make a Tesla look like a 1930s Ford if you wanted to. You could literally make a Tesla look like a Cadillac 16 from the 1930s. You could make it look like anything, and that's what bugs me. There's no reason not to do that. And I think it sucks that Teslas are such boring looking cars because they all look the same and they all look boring. They're very, very generic, even down to the choice of colors, most of them being white. It is, as I said, the iPhone of cars. As great as they can be, there's just something very hive mind about it. And unfortunately about many of their owners as well, at least in real life. 
in the game, thankfully you don't have to worry about that side of things too much, but as far as this car itself, don't short shrift this thing. It deserves a lot more attention than I think a lot of players are giving it credit for. I feel like more and more people are finally giving it a try, because even initially, myself included, there were those of us who thought, okay, yeah, this thing definitely has potential, even before we saw it in action or drove it in the game, but when you actually do try it out and see just how much of an improvement this is over the Model S in terms of its usability in the game, well, it's leaps and bounds ahead. Unfortunately, of course, it does suffer from a couple of the classic EV issues, which is a lot of stuff tends to become one-make racing in custom events. As I said, you can use it against other cars in career mode, so thankfully it's not too much of an issue. And obviously the number one problem, which is technically part of the problem in real life too, I guess, pitting it. Races either have to be super short or fuel needs to not be an issue at all in the event. As long as those things are applicable, then you'll be fine in the Tesla. As soon as you need any kind of pit in though, it's the same kind of downside that stuff like the Volkswagen IDR has. That was such a disappointment to me because it's such a cool car, one of the coolest electric cars around, certainly one of the quickest, it proved that time and time again, and yet it ends up being next to useless for most of the game. And that's such a shame because so much of endurance racing depends on that kind of stuff, it basically rules out cars which I would at least otherwise love to use. You just have to pick more carefully what race you're going to use it in. So that's it for my thoughts on the Tesla. I'd, of course, I'd love to hear the thoughts of you down below if you were maybe disappointed by the car and certainly if you did enjoy it. But that's it for all of the cars in Spec 2. Of course, there is more Gran Turismo content always still to come. We'll have to see what happens next month, presumably with a Christmas update, perhaps. Of course, I will be returning to special projects with another pack in future as well. And... I would say it's overall a pretty damn good month for Gran Turismo 7. It's certainly the best update all round which we've ever had, and my gripe is just that this is the kind of standard we should have been having anyway. If you're going to do updates, make them worthwhile, not just uh, something that feels like an afterthought, which is why Spec 2 feels so much better to me. But that's it for my thoughts on the update and for all of the cars therein. Of course, we will be revisiting some of these and some of the engine swaps, etc. in terms of future builds as well. So stick around for those. And for now, thanks for watching.